you couldn't get there on your own. You can't be good enough. You can't go to enough church services. You can't tithe enough. None of that matters. God is after your heart. Hello there. You are listening to the Girl Talk Podcast. Brought to you by our friends at Fox Toyota of East Tennessee. My name is Carol. My name is Kelly. Hey, I'm Trisha. And we're so glad that you are here today. Got a big old discussion on the table. What do you do when something in the world is bigger than you? We want to specifically talk about what's going on in the Ukraine right now and how that seems to be on everyone's mind. And how do you deal with it? How do you put it in perspective? And most importantly, how do you not get bogged down by it. Um, I think that's the important thing that we're going to talk about today. So how do you react when something's going on in the world? I mean, I think with this kind of thing specifically, Mm -hmm. I start with being heartbroken. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's just, I want so Mm -hmm. desperately to just run into the situation and fix it and, you know, help people, you know, learn how to treat each other with love and respect and kindness and, that's way beyond the scope of what little Kelly Brandon can do sitting in, you know, Asheville, North Carolina. Well, I think one of the things that's hard, at least for me, I don't know for y'all, but um, is when you hear about things that are going on on the other side of the world, you tend to be so far removed from it that you don't even really think about it or you aren't broken. I mean, you can be broken heart about it in that moment. But on a daily basis, it kind of gets lost in the shuffle of everything else. Yeah, Yeah, I'll see the news and I will have that heartbroken moment and I will pray and I will feel so um, burdened by what is happening. And then I have to go in the grocery store and buy stuff for Taco Tuesday night. And it's so weird. And I feel like, am I not being a good person because I'm like going on with my life? Mm. Um, Or do I need to just stop and, and, and constantly like pray for them like I it's it's very difficult to navigate yeah Mm -hmm. so I I found something that helps me in these kinds of situations if I put a face to it Mm -hmm. so when this all began a friend of mine texted me and she had actually been was friends with two uh, or a whole family that lives in Ukraine and she had worked at a Christian camp with the mom and the dad and she sent me a picture of them wow and that so helped me Um, yeah. filter the mm-hmm. news because a lot of times when you hear something like a war, it is a war, but it is so big that you can't even get it down to bite-sized pieces where it affects families. Yeah. And so that for me gave me a face for what is going yeah. on in the Ukraine. And as I prayed for um, this, this sweet couple and their three children um, for safety in the beginning and for um, as as things have progressed, specific needs that they have as a family. It's helped me really put a face to it because I think that's one of the things that we do in our culture is that we get breaking news all the time, so nothing's really breaking news anymore. And we forget that there are people and families and individuals and grandmothers and, you know, all the people mm-hmm. that this affects when something goes on in the world. So that has really helped me to put a face. And, I, you know, that's one of the things I love about social media is now that we can see faces of right. people who are living that life mm-hmm. right now. You know, you see pictures right now of people who are refugees in another country who have fled the um, the country and are now in other places and been displaced. And so you see their faces. Mm-hmm. And so that, for me, helps me humanize the issue at hand. So I think that's important for us to do because you connect heart to heart when you do that. I think it's also one of the beautiful things about the melting pot that is America. Yeah. That we all, we're either one or two degrees mm. uh, separated from somebody who knows somebody yeah. in the situation in Ukraine, Yeah, knows somebody who's in the situation in Russia, or um, they themselves have a loved one that's mm. over there. When The week this all happened in late February... I was at a conference and one of the men that I was at this conference with has a daughter who's Ukrainian that he adopted and she still lives in the Ukraine. Like she's Mm -hmm. gone back or Mm -hmm. whatever. She lives in the Ukraine, has two young children, is expecting her third and is is single. (gasps) And so we were, it's the same thing. I think it's that humanizing and really putting a face and a name. Mm -hmm. Her name is Irina. And so Mm -hmm. I'm able to, when I pray for the people in Ukraine, when I pray for the folks in Russia, I'm able to say, hey, God, and be with 
Irina Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. just remember, at least if it's secondhand, kind of what she's going through. Sure. Sure. It's awful. Yeah. I feel like we do have a responsibility to Mm -hmm. share the stories that we hear, that we know, because it does continue to help other people have those faces and those hearts in mind. Yeah. Um, I was reading about um, a 10-year-old little boy. His mom had to put him on a train by himself Mm. with only like a sack full of some food and a handwritten number on the back of his hand. She had to put him on this train because her mother was seriously ill and couldn't leave Ukraine. Mm. So her only hope to get her son out was to put him on this train with with the number of a relative written on the back of his hand. Mm. And he had to travel, I think it was 600 miles to get to this place in Poland. But people rallied around this guy. He everywhere he went, people stopped and helped him. They gave him food. They gave him warm clothes. They gave him shelter. And and he progressed and he actually made it where he was going, where he could get a hold of that person with that number on the back of his hand. And the story made news. And so like some some government official in Poland actually came to meet him. But sharing those stories so that we do know what's going on, it's so easy with, you know, we watch movies, we see movies of crazy things and we just kind of put that in a different box Mm. and it's easy to watch the news and think it's in that same different box so the responsibility of sharing stories like Irina and sharing stories of this little boy and the 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 people that you know it's important so that we can our heart needs to break for what breaks God's heart sure Mm -hmm. yeah absolutely and I think another way to engage and to get involved is to find an organization that's at work there Mm. You know, yes. um, that that always helps me. I know Samaritan's Purse is great to provide prayer yes. points and information right. as they can uh, mm-hmm. with relief efforts and the, the refugees and needs that they have. So it's also good not only to put a face to it, but also to connect with organizations that align with your beliefs that are helping people on the ground there so that you can know better. Because what's pray. the one yeah. thing you need when you're hopeless? Hope, hope. Mm -hmm. And where do we only find our hope? And that's in Jesus. Mm -hmm. And if we have to partner with folks like Samaritan's Purse or other organizations that are not just going to help with relief, but are going and talking about Jesus Mm -hmm. because they might not make it. Yeah. There's all kinds Mm -hmm. of relief that you can provide that they may not. This, this may end badly for everybody in Ukraine. Right. But if they have Jesus, it does not end badly. Mm-hmm. Well, and I know um, by hearing the stories mm-hmm. and by doing a little research, you also see God is at work. We yes. just heard a story in our meeting time during our devotions today. Our friend Laura shared with us that um, a guy who was a representative for Evangelism Explosion there in Ukraine, um, his family was hungry. So he went out to the store to try to find them something to eat and encountered and had 20 gospel conversations and 20 people came to Christ Wow! while he was out searching for food for his family. He found a bottle of ketchup and a bag of carrots and they were able to eat soup that night. But more importantly, they had the 20, he had the 20 gospel conversations and 20 new believers are now trusting Christ and walking through this with hope. Yes. And you know, God yeah. is doing a thing. Right. Y'all. He's doing the thing. And yeah. that's yeah. what we have to remember too. Yeah. When things like this are, when they feel so far out of our control, we have to remember that God has not left his throne. Yeah. And he has a plan. And from heartache, he can bring beauty. Yeah. Let's talk about how to live in that tension, because I think that is you, you go either one way or the other. You either are so involved with the political part of whatever's going on. And I'm not just talking about Ukraine. I'm talking about anything. Mm-hmm. You either get so involved with the details in the political part of it that you forget about God. Or you get so far into God that you just don't even care about the specifics, you know. And I think neither Danger. place is really a good, healthy place. I think somewhere in the middle where you remember God's sovereignty and you know that ultimately he has the final say. And that he, I mean, we go back to the Old Testament. You can see where he used even evil kings to accomplish his purposes, you know. So I think we have to live in the tension of knowing what's going on, like not sticking our head in the sand and just saying, well, God's got God's in control and not knowing about it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We have to live in the tension of knowing and believing God in, in the middle. You know? I think part of what that does is gives us urgency, mm. not panic, but yeah. urgency, yeah. an urgency to share, to share the gospel, to share 
the hope that we have, exactly what you're saying to the people that are in the direst circumstances, but also to the people in your uh, workspace, also to the people in your friend group, because everybody needs that hope right now. And hearts are softened now. Yeah. And when and when God, I think the urgency is that I think we all feel like the world is in bad shape and it's not going to get better. Yeah. So we need to do our part to tell people about the only hope. And that can be in your grocery store, in your cubicle or uh, overseas. Yeah, absolutely. It's time. It is time. It is time. And I feel like that too. Like time is short. Yeah. And And it's also time to pray. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, when we first, the Monday after um, this, you know, fiasco started, we, my, my team uh, here at the Light FM stopped and did a very concerted prayer effort. Oh, it, took, it was probably 20 minutes long of just nothing but prayer for different prayer points in mm-hmm. the Ukraine. And it was powerful and it was yeah. moving and it brought us all to tears. And we prayed for the Ukrainian people and the kids and the mamas that are having to flee and the refugees. And we prayed for the Russians, especially the ones that mm-hmm. are fighting that don't want to. Mm-hmm. And the ones who have family in Ukraine, too, mm-hmm. There's because they're so intertwined you know we prayed for the military we prayed for the leaders and their decisions that they were making and it and missionaries we prayed Mm. for the missionaries that are over there helping and praying and you know spreading the gospel and it was it was really powerful it 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 changed us yeah Yeah. and i think it gets us out of ourselves as far as having a united states of america mindset yes yes because i don't know if you've read this verse lately but for god so loved the world like not just the United States of America, the world. He cares about those mm-hmm. things, and that breaks his heart. Mm-hmm. And I, I think one of the things that we do is we get a that dangerous Western mindset, whether it's all about the United States, and um, we have to think outside ourselves. And, in fact, one of the, the exercises that is good for me sometimes is to sit down and think about what if I was living in the Ukraine today? What if I walked out my front door this morning and saw a hole in the pavement where a missile had struck? What if I had to put my child on a train, get him to safety, because my mom wasn't doing it? I mean, you know, I'm thinking what through I all Irina. those things. How was I feel, mm-hmm. you know, yes. and praying from that place of desperation? I believe now more than ever before it's time for us, number one, to get back to God's Word as the standard mm-hmm. I know I stand on that and harp on that a lot, but get to get back to that. But also to trust God as never to bo- f- before, to pray before, and to unite with other believers. Mm-hmm. You know, now is the time. This is not, you know, like a dress rehearsal for the time. This is the time. Yeah, and I believe it. I believe it, too. And, you know, the Bible says clearly that God can turn the hearts of kings. You know? Oh, yeah. Just because somebody... Um, holds a high political position doesn't mean they're beyond the control of God. That's right. And so I think it's time for us as believers to um, not stick our heads in the sand, but know what's going on um, and and engage in our conversation. And because even people here are looking for hope because they're looking at yeah. that situation and they're panicking because you hear other countries brought up in the, the ramifications of aligning with this country and that coming, mm-hmm. you know, all this stuff. And the the truth of the matter is just what you said. The gospel is true. God is sovereign. And if you don't know him, now is the time. In fact, you know, I can't think of a better time. Hey, if, if you're listening to this podcast mm-hmm. right now and you maybe clicked on it because you were interested to hear uh, what we we're going to talk about with all that's going on in the Ukraine, I want you to know that we would not be sitting here behind these microphones today, um, aside from God, he called us to do this. Mm -hmm. This was his idea. Girl Talk is his podcast. We just get to sit down and talk about it, and we're honored to do so. But we would not be doing our job if we didn't give you the opportunity to respond to the gospel. Mm -hmm. And the gospel is as simple as this. Jesus paid the price for you so that you could live in right relationship with God. Simple as that. You couldn't get there on your own. You can't be good enough. You can't go to enough church services. You can't tithe enough. None of that matters. God is after your heart. And there's no way because we're all sinful. Every one of us sitting around yep. these microphones. Oh, if, yes. you, if you knew what we'd done, you probably wouldn't ever listen to this podcast again. <laughs> True. <laughs> you know, we have sin. Just we trust do. us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, 
And we found forgiveness Mm -hmm. at the foot of the cross because we asked Jesus to be our Mm -hmm. Savior. And we said, I'm tired of trying to do it on my own. And I can't manage this on my own. I can't get to God any other way. There's only one way. And I'll go be as bold as to say that because that's what I believe. And that's what this ministry believes, that there's one way and his name is Jesus. And we try to make it so hard. It's really not that hard at all. In fact, if you got a cell phone sitting in front of you, if you're listening to this on your cell phone, you can simply text the word Jesus to this phone number, 1-800-293-1069. What's going to happen is you're going to get a link back to Billy Graham's Steps to Peace with God. He founded this radio ministry, and it'll walk you through step by step what it means to ask Jesus to be your Lord and Savior right now. So it can totally change the way that you yes. view world events. Yes. But that is our hope. It's not a political leader. It's not a political party. It's not a country. Our hope lies in Jesus and what he did on the cross. And if your hope doesn't lie there, then your hope is shaking right now. And that is why, because God has brought you to this moment. So if you'll do that, just the word Jesus to 800-293-1069. We'll get you all the information you need to start taking those steps. Now, if you are a believer, I will say this. I believe now, we've said it before, now is the time to have gospel conversations with Mm -hmm. people. You know, I'm not, you know, a doomsday theorist, but I think time is growing short. I do too. And I think it's time for us to finally say, you know what, I'm going to put how I feel and my embarrassment and my uncomfortableness Mm -hmm. aside and tell people what matters because I don't want to stand before God having not done that, Mm -hmm. given the opportunity. And we're given opportunities every day. I miss them all the time. I don't take advantage of every opportunity because I'm, I'm sinful. I'm fallen. I'm selfish, all those things. But I think now we as believers need to encourage one another, share the hope of Christ with Mm -hmm. people because they are looking for it and they're willing to listen right now. And if you will have a 10 minute conversation with somebody, they'll tell you what their problem is. I mean, like you don't even have to work that hard. Like they will just reveal that to you in the way that they talk and the things that they speak about and maybe even the uncertainty of what's going on in our world. They'll tell you. So now is the time. I'm sorry. I feel like I just got on a soapbox totally. Y'all are looking at me like. It's a great soapbox. And I want to add that this is a time to recommit. Yeah. If you have let your faith Mm. be put on the back burner of your life. Right now, today is the day that you hit your knees in prayer and ask God to help you recommit your Mm -hmm. life Mm -hmm. to what he's calling you to do, what he is calling believers to do. And that is to share the gospel and to be and live on fire for him. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. we've gotten weak. Yeah. And this kind of stuff reminds us how weak we've really gotten in our mm-hmm. faith. Yeah. So true. Yeah. No no time to play church. You've said that before. Yeah. It's yeah. so true. This is not the time for that. And I want to encourage you, if you do take the step to have that conversation, what happens is not up to you. That's right. It's not. That's it's true. not. It's God's work. You're just planting the seeds. Mm-hmm. I have shared my faith before and I didn't have that let's pray to receive Christ moment. And I felt like I failed. Yeah. But that's not a failure. That's right. When you when you do your part and you never know, God's working always. He's always working behind the scenes um, with other people as well. So you don't know. But that the seed that you plant might be watered in 20 minutes. It might be watered in 20 days, 20 years. But you do your part and God will do his. That's success right. is simply sharing what Jesus has done mm-hmm. in your heart. Mm-hmm. That's success. Yeah. For too long, we made it about the walking down the aisle. Or, numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Numbers. Exactly. But and it, having the perfect thing to say. Right. Yeah. yeah that's right. not success either. It's right. not success to Script. say, oh, I know the Romans road and right. I'm going to teach it to right. you. It's sharing your own life, your own story, your own testimony. Nobody can fault you for that. Yeah. And, and But I'll add this, that Jesus has to be the hero. Because sometimes Always. we, we kind of make ourselves the hero, you know. Always. But Jesus is the That's difference right. in our story, in a story that does not have us, uh, a, a story that, that has somebody else in it. And so just make sure Jesus is the hero of your story. Hey, you know what? We exist, I've, I've said it before, we exist to help you grow in your, our, our, first, our first thing we want, to, want you to do is to come to know Jesus. Second thing is, we want you to be discipled. We want you to grow in your faith. And then we want you to go out and serve whatever way God's 
called you to serve because he's given us all gifts to serve the kingdom of God, to serve the body of Christ. And that's what it's all about. And so any portion of that, wherever you are on that journey, this is the place for you. We want you to be here. We love when you come to this podcast and we love that you're listening today. So let us know how we can help you. You can reach out. You can reach out on the Facebook page. You can send us a message on the girlfriend's page, however you want to get in touch. We also have an email, girltalk at the lightfm.org. We'd love for you to send us an email. We love you. We care about you. We care about you enough to tell you the truth. That's right. And uh, we are so glad that you are here today for this discussion. So get in touch with us, however it's easiest for you. We'd love to hear from you. And I want to say thank you to our friends at Fox Toyota of East Tennessee for their partnership and ministry. Could not do it without your help. So thank you very much. And we'll see you next time we gather around these microphones for the Girl Talk Podcast.